So you've got an old Mac or you're looking to buy an old Mac. You've been watching my other videos and you're on board with some DIY upgrades and open core legacy patcher. But you're left wondering, how old is too old? Because I'm sure you're already subscribed with the bell icon turned on, subtle hint if you aren't, you know that a 2012 iMac is still very usable in 2024, when appropriately spec'd and upgraded, of course. But how about a 2008 Mac Pro that you can find for almost free these days? If you've got a light workload, will it pull its weight in aluminum? Or should you pillage the couch cushions for some spare change and get something newer like this 2017? Today we're going to find out, so let's get started. This is the Mac Pro 3,1 from 2008, a successor to the original Intel Mac Pro, released in 2006. This is the oldest Mac Pro supported by OpenCore Legacy Patcher, at least as configured from Apple. This Mac has already been upgraded to 24 gigs of RAM, multiple storage hard drives, and an SSD. To make this comparison a little more fair, we'll be reducing the Mac Pro's 24 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes of RAM and removing the additional storage to bring those specs more in line with our 2017 iMac. The Mac Pro will be keeping its stock dual 3 gigahertz Xeon CPUs, although due to some limitations of the system, OpenCore limits older Mac Pros to four CPU cores to prevent some weird kernel panic type things from happening. Both systems will be upgraded to macOS Sequoia, and the Mac Pro will be getting a Radeon R9 390 GPU upgrade so that both systems have metal graphics acceleration, make it a little bit more of a fair test. A video is planned to show the full upgrade process and to push this 2008 even further, so make sure you're subscribed with the bell icon turned on for future videos. Now for our contender, the 2017 iMac. Our 2017 specimen is equipped with an Intel Core i5 7500 3GHz CPU, Radeon Pro 560 graphics, and a 4K Retina screen. Although I don't want to break the LCD seal right now, someone has previously gotten in here and upgraded from the stock 8GB to 16GB of RAM, as well as upgraded the 1TB Fusion hard drive to a SSD. If you look here on the corner, this is why I don't like aftermarket seal kits they kind of tend to let go sometimes and don't always seal securely. Stay tuned though, because my Daily Driver 2015 iMac with soldered RAM is due for replacement and I plan to kit this 2017 out to the max. Our scope here is really to compare these two systems with benchmarks and real world tests to see how they compare in 2024. There are a lot of reports that the 2008 Mac Pro are really unstable with Sequoia on OpenCore Legacy Patcher due to missing CPU instruction sets, so we're going to extend the testing to the 2008 to see just where the limits are. First, we have iMovie. This is the latest official version straight from the App Store. As far as I can tell, iMovie seems to run absolutely flawlessly on the 2008 Mac Pro. It's important to remember that a metal GPU is absolutely necessary. This will not work on a Mac Pro's stock GPU. But I can scrub through the footage, play back segments, and render the video. This is a relatively short render, and it seems to be taking longer than expected. Unfortunately, I don't think iMovie relies heavily on GPU for video encoding. Of course, the 2017 has no issues scrubbing the timeline, and by comparison, you can see the 2017 renders the same footage in literally fractions of the time. Even a 2015 MacBook Air with a mobile CPU renders footage faster than the Mac Pro does, um, which is pretty sad. So as long as you don't have to sit around waiting for a video to render, the balance of the iMovie experience on the 2008 seems pretty solid. But this is a Mac Pro. So let's say you want to run a more pro video editor like DaVinci Resolve. I don't currently use Resolve, so I don't have any projects I can open. I grabbed a clip from the 2012 iMac video and brought it into the timeline. While scrubbing through and playing back, something didn't feel exactly right, like the timing was off a little. It's not DaVinci or the clip itself because they play normally on the 2017. I did render the clips out on both systems. As you can see, the 2008 is much slower tier two. On the surface, this 2008 could still be usable here too in a pinch. 
Although the jittery timeline behavior makes me wonder if there could be potentially some other issues I didn't run into. I did a disk speed test as well between both Macs. Both SSDs are aftermarket and based on the performance of the 2017, it looks like the SSD has no DRAM cache. I do plan on trying an NVMe SSD in a future 2008 Mac Pro upgrade video, so we'll have to see how that plays out. Microsoft Word launches fine, and so does Apple Pages. Not a whole lot to say other than it does launch and appears to work correctly. Compared to the 2008, the 2017 doesn't seem all that much faster for this type of task. Cinebench. You can pause the video here and comment below how you think the Mac Pro will perform compared to the iMac. Oh, and while you're at it, make sure you're subscribed with the bell icon turned on. To be fair, the Mac Pro is only running four out of its eight cores. I'm not sure the specific details, but the Open Core docs talk about an ACPI issue that causes these 3,1 Mac Pros to kernel panic when booting Sequoia with more than four cores. So it disables the extra cores by default. And although this Mac Pro has professional workstation CPUs, they're showing their age. A desktop quad core i5 absolutely clobbers these old Xeons in this benchmark. Although you probably expected this after the video render tests. Just to round off the testing a little bit, I've included Passmark's performance test memory benchmark. The Mac Pro uses DDR2, and while the iMac uses DDR4, this is like comparing apples to pears. No pun intended. But numbers are numbers, and here are the numbers. You guys often ask about Adobe, and well, I don't think we're going to be working with Adobe products in the foreseeable future even the demo versions. Adobe has taken a number of anti-consumer stances in its products and licensing. For photo editing, instead of Photoshop, we're going to be using Affinity Photo V2. No disrespect to the GIMP or any of you Linux users, but Affinity works a little more similarly to Photoshop. And I know the GIMP is free, but uh, Affinity is pretty affordable too. For a basic test, we just need to make sure that the Affinity even launches on the Mac Pro. I loaded up a test image and applied an effect. I did try a few different ones and there doesn't seem to be any issues and it seems Affinity is working properly. Affinity also comes with this fancy benchmark tool. You can see that the iMac scores higher in the CPU tests as expected, but the iMac's graphics is no match for the Mac Pro's Radeon R9 390. This one's less of a maybe practical test, but I think this one's important to do too. We need to have like a well-rounded test of uh, how these systems are going to perform. So now we've got Blender. Blender seems to run just fine. It opens the sample file and begins the render. Here's another example of how this old CPU is showing its age though in the Mac Pro. I don't know much about Blender and 3D rendering, but it seems to be using exclusively CPU to do its render. After doing some reading, it seems like it's possible to use GPU for rendering. However, only newer GPUs appear to be supported. Of course, since we're doing a CPU render, the iMac is doing much better. I didn't bother finishing the render because let's be real here. It's not really practical to render images on either of these systems without GPU acceleration. Aside from that limitation, Blender does appear to work properly and appears as though you should be able to render an image if you had time to sit around waiting for it. 3D graphics works as expected. With its beefy R9 390, the Mac Pro effortlessly doubles frames compared to the iMac with its little Radeon Pro 560. With this GPU installed, the Mac Pro is probably better suited for gaming than the iMac. This is really the only area the Mac Pro excels over the iMac. Truthfully, the GPU is probably a disproportionate upgrade. However, it was the only one I had on hand that I could get working that also supported metal. Although I didn't bother testing the iMac because I know that it already works, I did try Apple TV on the Mac Pro. I didn't play through a full show or anything, but I loaded up a random sample video and it played just fine. Smooth and no DRM issues. Safari seems to work fine too. I can load pages and play full screen video on YouTube. What more could a person ask for? 
We know GarageBand works on the iMac since it works perfectly on the older 2012 iMac, but I did want to test the Mac Pro. I still have curiosity of people talking about random crashes and kernel panics due to CPU's missing features. GarageBand seems to work fine and I couldn't see any issues with it. The last thing I wanted to test was VMware Fusion on this Mac Pro. We know it works on the iMac, but the Mac Pro has got a older CPU, so we got to check that out. Turns out, although we could install it and it appears to work, you can't actually start up a virtual machine because of an error. This likely is to do very much with the unsupported CPU that we were warned about earlier during the install. So what's the verdict then? Well, shockingly, the Mac Pro performed far better than expected. Don't get me wrong though. If you do want to do the Sequoia upgrade, then the 2017 iMac is by far the easiest. For the iMac, all we had to do is install OpenCore and it just worked. For the Mac Pro, the, on the other hand, I had to fight with it quite a bit. One of the issues is that when I started installing it and I started setting things up, I thought this was a 5 comma 1 and it's actually a 3 comma 1. Huge difference from what OpenCore is concerned. After I figured that out though, the installation was only a little rocky. But the biggest struggle was getting the GPU to work. macOS has drivers for the Radeon R9 390X, but not the 390. So you have to trick the system into using the drivers meant for the 390X, which is more difficult than it sounds. With all the patches and upgrades fully installed, this 2008 is honestly still a competent machine for playing around with. I'm genuinely surprised at how well this Mac runs. Based on other people's reviews, this thing should be a steaming pile of crashes and kernel panics, but through my testing, after I finally got it configured correctly, it was exceptionally stable. I don't think it crashed or kernel panicked on me even once. And with its timeless cheese grater mesh and modern operating system, for basic tasks, this thing looks and feels like a modern system. There's a few other caveats though, which I plan to get into in another video looking specifically at the 2008 Mac Pro and upgrading it to the Max. So which one should you go with? Well, if you have nothing right now and are looking to buy something, definitely go with the 2017 iMac. Although I'm super impressed with the Mac Pro, like really impressed, I can't recommend someone spend money on it. It's just way too old at this point. And to get it to the point where I have mine, even if you have all the parts on hand, it's just not worth the time and the cost. Even if the computer was still free, the cost of a metal GPU and RAM alone would make this impractical. Oh, and I didn't get into power consumption. This behemoth just guzzles power, even without the screen. And this iMac, just sips on power. Unless your power is free, daily driving this guy is going to put a measurable dent in your power bill. Thanks so much for watching. Please drop a comment below and tell me about the oldest computer you used to daily drive. Also, remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and maybe share this video with someone you think might find it interesting. Stay curious, keep tinkering, and until next time, happy retro computing everyone.